And now we get to talk about animation. You know, bringing things to life in After Effects is really at the heart of the program. So this is where things start to get really exciting. And really one of the great things about animating in After Effects is that once you learn how to animate any property, you can animate anything in After Effects. Everything animates the same way. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've created this learning to animate project you'll find in the chapter five folder. And we basically have this logo layer here. Go ahead and click this little disclosure triangle here to expand the layer and see its properties. When we first click it, we see this uh, transform here. Click the triangle next to transform and you'll open up the five basic transform properties. Learning and playing with these five properties is going to be the focus of this chapter. You see, even when you start getting masterful at After Effects and you learn effects and expressions and all that stuff, it's still these five simple basic properties that you will animate more than any other. At least that's the case for most workflows anyway. Now, the cool thing about these properties is that there is a shortcut for each one of them. And all you have to do is remember the word traps, T-R-A-P-S. The T is the shortcut for opacity. That's the only weird one that doesn't really make any sense. Maybe if it helps, you could think of opacity is in the letter T. And then R for rotation, A for anchor point, P for position, and S for scale. So we don't have to open up the layer and then the transform every time we want to animate something. In this case, we're going to animate and adjust opacity. So with the layer selected, I'm just going to hit the letter T, and there's opacity. Hit the letter R, opacity is removed, and we see rotation. A for anchor point, P for position, S for scale. To see multiple properties, use the shift key and the property shortcut. So if I wanted to see scale and position, with the scale out, I would hit shift P. Now I can see both of them. And again, in our case, we're going to animate opacity. So to replace both of these with opacity, I press the letter T and there you go. Now across from opacity, we see this 100%. This 100% indicates the value for opacity. And pretty much anywhere in After Effects where you see this orange text with a dotted underline, that indicates hot text. Basically what that means is you can click on this and then scrub it left and right to decrease and increase the value. You could also click once in this field to manually type a number. Let's say I know I want this to be 23%. Hit 23 and hit enter. It jumps exactly to 23%. This is also a little secret calculator. So let's say we have 23, and let's say we need this to be, uh, I don't know, maybe 27% more. I could hit on the numeric keypad, plus 27, hit enter, and 23 plus 27 is 50. We could also use the other basic mathematic functions. So we could subtract, divide, and multiply. Now in this case, I'm gonna take this back up to 100%, just click and drag to the right. Opacity, remember, is just basically the opposite of transparency, so we can't go past 100%. Now here's the way we animate things. We have to do three basic steps in order to animate. The first thing we need to do is click this stopwatch. Every single animatable property in After Effects will have a stopwatch next to it. So the very first thing we do to begin the animation process is to click that stopwatch. That does two things. First of all, that tells After Effects that we want to animate this property. In other words, we want it to change over time. The second thing it does is it creates something called a keyframe, this little golden diamond here that we see pop up in the timeline. Keyframes are essentially data storage containers. It indicates that After Effects will remember to be at this spot at this time, in our case, to have 100% opacity. So that is the first step of animation. We click the stopwatch. The next step is that we click the current time indicator and move in time. Anywhere will do. And then all we have to do to create animation is simply change the value. This creates another keyframe, which again is like a little storage container which remembers that After Effects at this exact frame, After Effects needs to be at 42% opacity. Now in other programs, you have to set up tweening, like in Flash you have to do all this crazy tweening stuff. You don't have to do that in After Effects. Our animation is done, watch this. I can scrub this current time indicator and we could watch this fade from 100% to 42%. And that's it, we have animation. I could even move the current time indicator again and change the value again to 0% or whatever I want. I could move my current time indicator in between two existing keyframes and take this to 100%. Now After Effects has to be at 42% at this frame, 100% at this frame, and 0% or completely faded out at this frame. And I don't have to reset it or have it recalculate, it just does that automatically. So we have this cool little fading in and out animation which goes really well with our logo. Now that I have multiple keyframes here, you'll notice that they're not always yellow. They're only yellow when they're selected. You select them by clicking on them. So if I click away from them in some blank area down here in the timeline panel, they'll all be deselected. I can tell that visually because they're all gray. Now if you want to delete a keyframe, 
you could simply click it to select it and hit the delete key on your keyboard. But if you're just trying to remove a keyframe, do not click this stopwatch. Because remember, that stopwatch tells After Effects that we want this property to animate. So if we click this stopwatch again, that tells After Effects, eh, never mind. We don't want to animate this property. So what it's going to do is delete all of the keyframes on this property. Because we told After Effects we don't want it to animate. So those are the basics of how to animate something in After Effects. And if you can animate opacity, you could animate anything else. Now we're going to get into the next movie and start looking at the other basic transforms. Now that's all there is to the training portion of the movie, but if you'd like a little bit of the history of keyframes, then stick around. I'm going to tell you a little bit about where those terms come from. Now in the old days of animation, like Walt Disney hand-drawn animation, they paid the high-paid animators to create these keyframes, these significant frames of animation. Because remember that animation or video is just a series of still images, and these still images in video and animation are called frames. So the high-paid animators made the keyframes, the important frames. And then what they would do is they would take those frames and send those to a junior animator who would then create the frames in between. And so that process of creating the frames in between the keyframes became known as tweening. Well, in After Effects, you and I are like those high-paid animators. We set the keyframes, and After Effects, being our grunt servant, creates the in-between frames, the frames in between our keyframes that we create. So again, as a high-paid animator, we come in here, click the stopwatch, make a keyframe, and we say, be here at this point, and then now be here at this point. After Effects, now you figure out the rest. You create the in-between frames. As we'll see later in this training series, tweening is referred to as interpolation in After Effects. But again, we'll cover that later. So let's now jump into talking about position. 